If you're interested in what I look like in real life and want to learn more about me, then follow my Instagram page at Joe the Insomniac. Not a ranger, but I used to be in a group that's somewhat to like to the scouts. We spend a lot of time in the woods and weird stuff happens often, but a lot of the time, they're easy to explain. One thing happened though, that to this day, scares the life out of me. I was a leader for the age of 8 to 10 years old, and we're out on a camping trip. It was the first year we stayed on that terrain. It was huge. Normally, we tend to explore the majority of a terrain before the kids arrive, so we're aware of any possible danger and the spots to avoid. This time, that's impossible though. Every camp we have, we always have a night called Game Night. It's usually a scary game in which the kids have to complete several tasks while the leaders scare the life out of them. Obviously, we had one too during that camp. We put monster masks on and hid out in the woods close to the checkpoints they pass. While running in between checkpoints, I found an open stretch of forest with little to no foliage, so it's ideal to chase after them. There was no real room to hide besides behind trees, so I couldn't use my flashlight or they'd be able to see me from miles away. It's dark. I like the unsettling kind of dark that plays tricks on your eyes, where you're imagining things that aren't real. During the stay there, I see a shadow that's around my size passing me a few times. I can't see it very well, so I'm assuming that it's just my mind playing tricks on me. When I turn my flashlight on, I can't see anything. Now the game's nearing its end. I saw the shadow again. This time, I could see it vaguely standing near a tree not far away from me. I thought it was one of the others hiding there ready to scare the kids and decide to go over there. Is this about time to go back? I aim my flashlight towards a tree while getting closer. I now notice that there's indeed somebody standing there, dressed in what appears to be a torn down burlap sack and having their head covered with a white plastic bag. Everything appears to be tied together though. I start to feel pure dread and nothing else. Something is really off here. I ask if everything's okay, there's no response. Now the only thing that I heard was this sound that appears as though somebody's knocking on wood. Nevertheless, I went a bit closer until I'm about 10 meters away from this person. The knocking sound turns out to be a person smashing their head repeatedly into the tree. They're barefoot, arms and legs are covered with mud, hands are weirdly cramped. I was convinced this is one of the leaders messing around with me so I say hey, knock it off. He then slowly turns his head to me, begins smiling and walking towards me. Something inside me just told me to run. It didn't matter if it's just a stupid prank. I ran away. Now if this wasn't a prank, I was in serious danger. So I run as fast as I can. I heard him running behind me. I didn't wait to turn though. I might have hit a tree. <laughs> I arrived back at the campsite and every single person that could be dressed like that was already there. They couldn't have gotten there before me. Still, I said to them, yeah guys, you got me there. And they just look at me weird thinking I'm trying to scare them, and we left it at that. For the following day, I wanted to check it out, 
Who knows? Maybe somebody ate the wrong mushroom and might be out there dying of hypothermia. I took someone else with me just in case and there was nothing for tenderless trees. We arrive at the tree where I saw them and there was a dead, skinned, decomposing rabbit nailed to the tree. We call the police. However, when the police have finished their investigation, they tell us that no, it's just a prank by one of the other scouts and that we have nothing to worry about. Weirded out, we brush it off and get on with the rest of the camping trip. To this day, I have no explanation for it whatsoever, and that person is probably still out there. In 2016, my boyfriend and I went camping in eastern Pennsylvania. The place we decided to stop for the night was primitive. The camping was free, no cell service, barely a road, etc. We did encounter two other people. They might not factor into what happened, but I'll describe them. The first woman was next to her truck at the side of the road. She had the hood open and seemed to be waiting for someone to stop by and offer help. Usually my boyfriend has no problem helping someone, but he said this time, something about her put him off. She didn't really seem to do anything wrong at the first glance, but usually when you want help, you look hopeful as you approach someone. She looked exactly as though she expected us to stop. That's what my boyfriend said anyway. I hadn't really noticed anything that strange about her though. The next person we had come across had chosen a spot and we're setting up a fire for hot dogs. I had noticed people drive by a few times, but my boyfriend pointed out each time there was the same car and the man in the car watched us every pass. My boyfriend was a little uneasy about this but we had driven around for a while before finding a place that we both agreed on. It had been raining and everything was muddy. We wanted the driest place that we could possibly find. He could have been doing the same thing. We briefly thought about moving to the next side of the road, but it was muddy too. If he wanted to find us, all he had to do was search for the tracks. There were some other tracks, but not many. He'd only have to backtrack a little to locate us again. He didn't come by another time, so we stayed, and spent several remaining hours goofing off before dark. No one else drove by. Now whether or not these two had anything to do with our experience, the real fear it came later. We had gone to sleep in our tent sometime around 3am and were awoken by this very loud noise. I can't describe it very well or remember exactly what it sounded like, but my boyfriend said it reminded him of a chain gun revving up. It was also similar to how it would sound if someone recorded a shovel being dragged over gravel and played it over a loudspeaker. He jumped up, looked out the little window, but couldn't really see anything. The sound repeated itself multiple times. I was too scared to speak, so my boyfriend whispered that it's probably miles off when I should sleep. I didn't question this, as I figured loud sounds could easily be heard miles off. After we left, he told me it sounded like it had actually been coming from just down the road, but he didn't want to freak me out. Looking back, I probably should have wondered why 
He would bother to whisper if it's so far off. I was terrified still. Every little thing I heard outside sounded like somebody walking around the tent. We laid there for a while longer when my boyfriend told me to get dressed because we're leaving. I got alarmed by this, and even more alarmed when he unwrapped the machete we brought for the trip out of his plastic. We now quickly load up the car. I look around for footprints that aren't our own. But despite the moon providing plenty of light, I can't really see. I did point out something to my boyfriend that he hasn't noticed so before we get to the car. There was a beer can by our dead fire that hasn't been there before. We didn't even bring any beer. While we were driving away, my boyfriend explained that he was nervous somebody had been luring us out. He knew it wasn't a good idea to run from the tent immediately. He also half expected us to find out the gas tank had been siphoned. But that wouldn't have stopped us because we had a hybrid car. Now we never actually had an explanation to what the sounds were that night or the weird people. But I'm almost definite that seeing them people and the following events were linked and have a horrible feeling that something terrible would have happened had we stayed there for any longer. One of my best buds from college was a geologist major that ended up becoming a ranger in the southeast US. He hadn't spoken to me in years, but I remember about 10 years back when he was telling me about an old married couple that he had recently helped out. He had seen them come to the park several days in a row and found out they're visiting from out west. They'd gotten engaged decades prior. They'd been searching for the spot they'd taken pictures of where he asked a question. After looking at the pics and figuring out roughly where they were, he escorted them in his vehicle. They then hiked to where they thought it might be. They found it and he left them and goes back to the station at the entrance. He said he got a weird feeling once he got back and felt like he needed to wait to see them whenever they left. Well, once it comes time to lock up at night, he still hasn't seen them leave, so he reports it. Left his assistant to wait at the shack at the entrance and went back to where he left them. He found both of them lying down along the bank of the river. Both are dead. He calls the police, went through the nine yards and went home. The police were able to disclose him their identities, but weren't sure anything else initially. He later learns that the wife was terminally ill with cancer. They both killed themselves along there. They chose to do it at that exact spot. My bud was torn up about it. He just hated the fact that they had to ask him where they needed to go and he was the one to lead them there.